This week in Jamaica now. Me say nobody no come, not even one doctor no come out. Outrage. Jamaicans left shock at the treatment and death of a teenage asthmatic girl at a corporate area hospital. Delayed again. Just when will Jamaicans start getting their COVID-19 jab? Almost there. PNP to know soon whether its bigwigs will have to testify in open court in long-running Trafigura bribery case. And the world reacts with sorrow at the passing of reggae legend Bonnie Whaler. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. The University Hospital of the West Indies has completed its investigation into the shocking treatment of 17-year-old asthmatic Jalissa McGowan at the facility before her death elsewhere last weekend. The college student was taken to the hospital last Friday by her mother, Narda McCoy, who said she was left in disbelief at the alleged refusal of medical personnel to tend to her daughter. Jalissa complained of chest pains at her St. Andrew home and was taken to the hospital where for more than an hour and despite gasping for air, nurses and doctors allegedly ignored pleas to give the young lady oxygen. If I went there from the beginning and she said she didn't have no oxygen there, I would have gone somewhere else. But in the oxygen she talked about, she said she a bed to put her on, to give her a little oxygen, to give her the nebulizer. No, my 17 year old just gone, so Just gone. When me go wrong in this, we come in one no. I mean, no, they're not going to say she did a quote. Which damn quote? Me, me, me say me a great fear, they come tell me say COVID. She was transported to the nearby Andrews Memorial Hospital, but it was too late as she was pronounced dead shortly after, triggering a massive public outrage. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said the events were tragic and that he has asked for a report while the hospital did its own. The Health Ministry has since ordered all public hospitals not to turn away any patient suffering from the life-threatening disorder asthma, even if they have concerns over coronavirus. The events resurrected last year's tragedy involving the late Jodian Ferron, who was found dead on the floor of the University Hospital, where she was admitted after bunglings at Andrews Memorial. By mid next week is the earliest when the first Jamaican on local soil is expected to receive a COVID-19 vaccine as the shifting timelines for the administration of the jab continues. The first vaccine shipment, a gift of 50,000 doses of the AstraZeneca from India, was expected on March 4, but Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton advised the day before that the new date would be March 8. No reason was provided. After the India batch, another set of 14,400 doses under the global sharing program COVAX is to follow on March 11. Another 1.8 million doses procured through a deal with the African medical supplies platform will also be due soon. The vaccination of Jamaicans is expected to begin 48 hours after the arrival of the first shipment of vaccines. On Tuesday, the Health Ministry outlined details of its vaccination plan, which aims to inoculate 65% of the population by March 31 next year across three phases. Under the first phase, which starts next month, approximately 248,000 persons are being targeted and will include groups such as government officials, healthcare workers, the elderly and members of the police and the military. Phase 2 will include people considered essential to economic activity, such as hotel workers and persons in the banking and transportation sectors. The general population will have their go in the third phase. Vaccination will be done on weekends by an appointments system. A ban on burials and funerals was among a series of new and tightened restrictions imposed by the government to control the spread of COVID-19. Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced on February 28 that for two weeks, starting on Monday, parish authorities must not issue orders for burials. That led to a rush by families to bury their loved ones and parlours to expand spaces amid complaints about the short notice. Mortuary operators reeling from the gathering restrictions say they expect a mad rush this weekend for ceremonies. Peter Perry, who operates a funeral home under his name, has chastised the government for having what he calls little or no regard for industry interests, arguing that they were not consulted before the decision was made. How are some of those people going to, going to store these bodies for the three weeks? What we're going to have is chaos when it's released. When these three weeks is released, it's going to be chaos. We're going to have a battle um, situation where and before, because people start rushing in, you, you see outside just a while ago, people start rushing in to have their, their loved one buried before the band. And I, I am sure as the band is lifted, you're going to have more rush 
more crowd, more spread. Funerals are known super spreaders, starting with the first COVID-19 case in Jamaica in March last year. On Wednesday evening, the Jamaica Constabulary Force said it halted a gathering at the Tranquility Funeral Home in Kingston after discovering more than 200 persons at an event there. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Holness also announced a three-week suspension of in-person church services, the closure of all beaches and rivers, and the requirement of all persons travelling to Jamaica, including citizens, to submit a negative COVID test no more than 72 hours old. The Privy Council has reserved judgment on whether former Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and four other PNP functionaries in the Trafigura case will have to give testimony in open court. The decision to reserve judgment was announced on Monday after the panel of judges heard legal arguments from attorneys for the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, and the five PNP functionaries. The DPP is Jamaica's designated central authority under the Mutual Assistance Criminal Matters Act and therefore represents foreign states which make requests under the law. The case stems from the request by authorities in the Netherlands from Mr. Simpson Miller, former PNP Chairman Robert Pickersgill, current PNP Chairman Philip Paulwell, former General Secretary Colin Campbell and businessman Norton Hines to answer questions around a $30 million donation to the party in 2006 by Dutch firm Trafigura Beheer. The donation was made while Jamaica, under the leadership of the then Simpson Miller administration, had an oil lifting agreement with Trafigura. Dutch firms are prohibited from making donations to foreign governments. Political Ombudsman Donna Parchment Brown says Dr. Michelle Charles, a recently elected legislator for the ruling Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, may have attempted to influence voters through her family business in last year's polls. The finding is contained in a letter the Ombudsman wrote to the JLP leader and Prime Minister Andrew Holness about Dr. Charles's conduct at a controversial pre-election distribution of state funds to farmers in St. Thomas last August. The Ombudsman concluded that Dr. Charles breached the political code of conduct and recommended that the first-time lawmaker make a public apology and participate in a mentorship program. Dr. Charles defeated the incumbent St. Thomas Eastern representative Dr. Fenton Ferguson of the People's National Party, PNP, in the September 3 general election. The PNP raised vote-buying allegations after Dr. Charles participated in an August 27, 2020 event hosted by her father, the now-retired PMP, Pernell Charles, and where she was seen addressing sugar workers and handing out payments of $50,000 from public funds. 40-year-old Nadine Geddes was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of her 36-year-old sister Tamara Geddes on Tuesday. Tamara was shot and killed inside her home at Reserve District in Trelawney on June 19 last year. Her 10-year-old daughter witnessed the killing. Nadine Geddes, who had pleaded guilty to murder on February 8, also confessed her guilt to conspiracy to murder and was also sentenced to five years at hard labor. The sentences are to run simultaneously and she is to serve 15 years before being eligible for parole. Meanwhile, two of the three persons who worked with the deceased woman's sister pleaded guilty on Wednesday. 33-year-old Tashana Young and 55-year-old Owen Irving, both from Norwood and St. James, will be sentenced later on. A sixth accused, 24-year-old Brian Shelley from Norwood, is yet to plead. <laughs> Tributes have been pouring in all week as the world mourns the death of reggae legend Bonnie Whaler, who died on March 2 at age 73. Bonnie, whose given name was Neville Livingston, was the last surviving member of the famous reggae group The Whalers that included Bob Marley and Peter Tosh. A three-time Grammy Award winner, Bonnie Whaler was at the forefront of reggae and was often the loudest voice on issues of race and class. Culture and Entertainment Minister Olivia Grange hailed Bonnie Whaler as one of the pioneers and standard bearers of Jamaica's music. Opposition leader Mark Golding said the star, songwriter and performer will live on as a cultural legend and icon. Bonnie Whaler had been in and out of hospital since suffering his second stroke in 2020. He survived by 13 children, 10 sisters and 3 brothers. Jean Watt, who had been Bonnie Whaler's companion for five decades, went missing in May of last year. In 2017, Bonnie Whaler was bestowed with the Order of Merit, the third highest national honour in Jamaica. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, we hear from Narda McCoy, the distraught mother of 17-year-old asthmatic Jalissa McGowan, 
who died tragically after allegedly being denied oxygen at the University Hospital of the West Indies. It's a Marija Andrews Memorial. A memorial name Andrews Hospital. I tell you the amount that the, the port of them come with them stretcher. They put on them gloves. I will just say asthma. Asthma, asthma they come. I will just asthma and they fell down guys. And come. But you see, look at how my aunt she did. Yeah, she did and she did and come. And my aunt she did it now. And in my aunt because I have her in the vehicle. I was at the back of the vehicle with her. When the doctor called me and said, Oh, there you are with me. I said, doctor just say, I know that. Because even when I have Andrews and I look after her, you know. And them say go and register. When I stood at the window, you know, I tell the lady, say, hold on, hold on, I go look, I'm so calm. I'm going to run, go around there, I draw the curtain, I'm going to see them. They were there working, they were fighting, I see. My mom and I bigger ask them to come tell me. Oh, I pick up the pieces. I mean, I want this arm to nobody else pick me. I nobody else. I wish we could have developed one champion for asthma. Something we have to do with that. I don't want nobody else child experience the same thing with my opinion I forgot through.